I'm Janice Dean. I'm Brett Baer. I'm Martha McCallum, and this is the Fox News Rundown. Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. I'm Trey Yanks. The Biden administration will move forward with the process to reopen a consulate in Jerusalem, a U.S. embassy spokesperson told Fox News Today. It's something unacceptable. It could uh, dramatically impede the relationship between Israelis and the Americans. This is something that friends don't do to each other. This is the Fox News Rundown, Evening Edition. The consulate general that serves Palestinians in Jerusalem was closed by President Trump in 2019, but it previously existed for decades. Despite heavy political pressure, President Biden will reopen the consulate in the Holy City. There's no indication right now that the Biden team plans to reverse other decisions made by President Trump, such as moving the embassy itself to Jerusalem or recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, though the consulate decision is drawing criticism from certain members of the Israeli government. Well, it's important to understand how Israelis feel about the relationship with the United States of America. For more on this story, this is Nir Barkat, a Knesset member and former mayor of Jerusalem. You know, on Israeli Independence Day, Israelis raised the Israeli flag and they raised the American flag. We see ourselves uh, as the strategic partner um, with shared values and shared ideologies to the Americans. And it's not about a specific administration. We cherish their relationship. There's so much in common. Now, uh, when the United States of America says uh, that they want to open up uh, an embassy, it's practically an embassy, a Palestinian embassy in Jerusalem, this is something totally unacceptable. It's poking Israelis in the eye. Since 75% of the Israeli public are against, God forbid, dividing the city of Jerusalem, and by doing something like this without consent, uh, between you and I, it's a bit bullying the Israeli government to make a decision that it's not in our best interest is something unacceptable. It could uh, dramatically impede the relationship between Israelis and the Americans. This is something that friends don't do to each other. And I'm deeply concerned that if and when this bullying continues, and uh, uh, God forbid if the Israeli government will uh, stutter on this issue, will impede the relationship between Israelis and Americans, which is very, very important for both countries. We know this is a largely unpopular decision among the Israeli population. There are the majority of citizens here that say this is not something they'd like to see, a consulate opening in Jerusalem that would serve the Palestinian people because they do have their government in Ramallah. You've spoken with U.S. politicians on both sides of the aisle. Talk to me about the bipartisan understanding in Washington from your perspective, the conversations that you've had regarding this issue of a consulate. Well, first of all, um, anybody that wants services in Jerusalem can go to the embassy that has, thank God, moved to Jerusalem and consolidated the uh, consulate that was here. So there's a department uh, in the embassy in Jerusalem that gives service to anybody that wants to knock on the American uh, uh, embassy's door. The, the understanding is that the consulate that the Americans want to open up here without Israeli consent, uh, the role is different. The role is to serve the uh, uh, Palestinian Authority, which sits on Ramallah. Uh, and this doesn't make any, two, any sense. If the Americans want to improve relationship with the Palestinians, we will not object. If it's for the embedderment of the Palestinian people, we will support. Uh, however, you don't do that while poking Israelis in the eye and do it in the capital, the united, undivided capital of the Jewish state. So um, there's ways to do that, and with consent, we have no problem. We will help um, serve the Palestinian people, uh, but in Ramallah. I think it's important to talk about this in context, and especially timing. The Biden administration is considering reopening this consulate, specifically in Jerusalem, after a summer where Israelis and Palestinians went to war. There was an 11-day war in May at the beginning of the summer, and it started mainly over the issue of Jerusalem itself. Is there a concern that taking this move and, and making this decision, it could re-spark some of the tension that erupted earlier this year in Jerusalem? Well. Before the timing, it's the wrong thing to do. Uh, and the timing makes it even worse because people will perceive this. I mean, uh, our enemies will perceive this as a reward for the Hamas and Iran uh, that are 
um, have targeted Jerusalem and they put Jerusalem, their goal is to not divide the city of Jerusalem, is to send all the Jews out of Israel. Uh, it, from their perspective, it's from the river to the sea. They don't see um, coexistence with Israel. And it's rewarding the worst enemies of Israel and the United States and the Western world. Um, and so they will understand that if the Americans are, maybe it's because of uh, uh, the missiles, the indiscriminate missiles they shot at Israel, and they created that round of violence. And it will um, make them feel that they're rewarded for the negative, uh, bad terrorist behavior. You've been listening to Nir Barkat, a Knesset member and former mayor of Jerusalem. We'll be right back. Get this and all your favorite Fox News podcasts ad-free on Apple Podcasts with Fox News Podcasts Plus. Just go to foxnewspodcasts.com for all the details. We also spoke with senior Palestinian official Mustafa Barghouti about the decision to reopen the U.S. consulate in Jerusalem. He reacted to the decision to move forward but wants a set date. The American consulate in Jerusalem existed for more than 100 years, and it was established before the creation of the State of Israel. So there was no meaning, really, of closing it uh, during Trump's time. And uh, the fact that the United States decided to move its embassy to Jerusalem without consulting with Palestinians does not uh, uh, makes no sense that uh, the same administration is trying to get a permission from Israel to bring back the consulate that existed before Israel existed. So in our opinion, this delay is unacceptable and uh, it does not send the right signal. And at the same time, it creates a lot of suspicion about the ability of the American administration to play a positive role in in moving us forward towards ending occupation and ending this horrible situation which Palestinians are subjected to. There were a lot of actions taken during the Trump administration that did not serve the Palestinian people, uh, such as recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, moving the embassy, um, allowing some settlement activities under their uh, view of international law. And I think there was hope in the early days of this new administration from Palestinians that we spoke with that this would be a new chapter and, and have uh, some more reasonable policies that would address the needs of Palestinians. How do you feel so far about the Biden administration? Are they fulfilling some of those early promises, those campaign promises, or do you feel sort of uh, they're, they're not taking the appropriate steps? I think what the Biden administration is doing is too little and too late. And uh, the fact is that uh, Trump tried to box in the Biden administration before it took power in many areas, including climate issues, including relationship with Europe and other countries. The Biden administration has relieved itself from these boxes and reversed the policy that Trump created, except on the Palestinian issue. Uh, They have not really changed the fact that the United States uh, violated international law by the recognition of the annexation of East Jerusalem, which is a violation of international law. The same applies to the Golan Heights, which were annexed illegally, and also the moving of the American embassy to Jerusalem and recognizing it as a capital, while we know that Jerusalem is an issue for final status negotiations. So in my opinion, Biden administration's freed itself from all the boxes that Mr. Trump put them in, except when it comes to the Palestinian issue. And that is the big question. Who decides the American policy? Is it the American administration or it is Israel and the Israeli lobby? That is the big question that Americans have to answer. You've been listening to senior Palestinian official Mustafa Barghouti. And now back to Israeli politician Nir Barakat. In terms of the relations between the United States and and Israel, this tight-knit relationship between Washington and Jerusalem. You've seen it yourself firsthand as as the former mayor of Jerusalem, now serving as a Knesset member with the Likud party. There is a a very important back-and-forth conversation that is ongoing when it relates to security, diplomacy, and shared interest in the region. Is this risking that relationship, the, the conversations that are ongoing about a possible consulate? We have so much in common. Combating global terrorism, focusing on health issues. You know, the Israeli state is focusing on how to make life better for all of us, for all people from the whole world. Uh, So while we have so much in common, we mustn't 
focus on the disagreements. And it's fine that this administration believes in a two-state solution. We don't. That's fine. But we can focus on the common denominator. We can focus on Im improvement of, better, the, of, of a better life for the Palestinians that live in Judea and Samaria side by side to the Israelis that live in Judea and Samaria and seek win-win deals. There's so much of that. So um, my uh, wish, and uh, I'm trying to convey a message to the American people that even the people think different than us, uh, which is certainly fine between friends and allies, let's focus on the common denominator and not poke each other in the eye. I'll give you an example. Imagine that the Russians want to open up an embassy and a consulate in Washington, D.C. to help the Puerto Ricans establish independence or focus on interests that the Americans feel that it's not in their best interest. You wouldn't expect your ally, to say the least your enemy, to do something that is not in the best interest of the American people. And uh, what we anticipate and expect in the relationship is to honor each other, honor the relationship, and even if we have disagreements, put them aside uh, and, uh, and really focus on so many good things that we could do together. You're in a unique perspective in all of this, having served as, as the mayor of Jerusalem, serving now in the Knesset, and also coming from the private sector. You understand the different areas of, of relationships, but also how to get things done in a bipartisan manner. Mm -hmm. The Israeli political system certainly set up much different than the American, but there are, are common denominators when you talk about politicians and the moves they make and, and why they make them. What's your take on, on the next few months and the next few years in Israel? There's a new government here, and obviously there's been a lot of tension in the region as it relates to Iran, uh, some of the threats against the Jewish state coming from places like Lebanon and Hezbollah. Where do things head from here, and, and what are your biggest concerns for Israel? We're going through some instability in our uh, uh, political system. Uh, the new government is comprised of left and right. When, when you try to seek the... It's like having a little bit of Democrats, a little bit of Republicans, a lot of independent, and sort of the direction is not very clear. And so many people in the United States and, and, and here in Israel see this as an interim government, uh, which is unclear where it's going. So it's uh, delicate. Um, my recommendation to the American government is not push this government too much because we could make, the, the relationship could be going the wrong way to a dead end. Uh, and uh, I believe, as uh, part of the opposition uh, in the parliament, that uh, we should replace this government. But as it comes to security and as it comes to other international things, uh, we will look at Israel's interests. You know, I'm putting Israel's interests beyond what we have right now, this instability in the, in the parliament and in the government, uh, and focus on the relationship with the United States, which is far way over and beyond this specific, specific government or this specific administration. When you look at the heart and core of the relationship between Israelis and Americans, we should uh, respect each other and continue that uh, amazing bond that uh, if I could pray and focus and I'll do everything I can to maintain that relationship. Nir Barkat, the former mayor of Jerusalem, a current Knesset member for the Likud party, currently in the opposition. Uh, leading the charge on this, certainly from the Israeli perspective, on this issue of the consulate. Sir, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Stay up to date by subscribing to this podcast at foxnewspodcasts.com. And for up-to-the-minute news, go to foxnews.com. Listen to be part of the conversation with me, Brian Kilmeade. I'll talk about the biggest stories of the day and get your take along with some of the biggest newsmakers around. Listen live on the Fox News app or get the podcast at Show.com.